Let us all stand for a short prayer. Are you ready to pray? Okay, let us pray. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Dear Lord, we offer this day all we do, think, and say. Give light to our mind to learn lessons of all kinds. Help us to be obedient, truthful, and loving to all. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Good morning, students! Okay, you can now take your seats. Is there any absent today from this class? None. Since nobody is absent today, let us give ourselves five claps. Ready? Go! One, two, three, four, five. Well done. Now, before we continue, let us recall our guidelines when we are having our lessons inside the classroom. First is to be prepared. Second is to be positive or be happy. Third is to be participative. Fourth is to be respectful of your classmates and teacher. And fifth is to be productive. Do you understand? Great. Now, let us have a short activity. Let's identify if you know something about the different art forms from the neoclassic period. I have here an activity sheet. Read the directions carefully and encircle the letter of the correct answer. I will only give you five minutes to finish this activity. Get one and pass. Get one and pass. You can now start answering. Is everybody finished? Okay, keep the activity sheet. Let us discover the correct answers to the questions in your activity sheet by doing the next activity. Let's have a group activity. I will group you into three. This will be group one, you will be group two, and this will be group three. Now, I will give each group a poster of a painting and an observation table. This is the observation table. Now, I want you to examine the painting, and as you examine the painting, you have to write your observations in the observation table. Do you understand? Okay, I will only give you five minutes to finish this activity. But before we continue, let us recall our guidelines when we are having a group activity inside the classroom. What is the first rule? Yes, Sophia Faith. Read the directions carefully. What is the second rule? Cheska. Cooperate with your groupmates. And what is the third rule? Angelito. Respect your groupmates and be productive. Very good. Now, I will, eat, I will give each group an observation table. Get one and pass. Get one and pass. Get one and pass. You can now begin the activity. Is everybody finished? Okay, if you are done, clap three times. One, two, three. Okay, you can now go back to your seats. Now let's listen to the observations of the different groups and the different paintings given to you. Let's begin with group one. For group one, the painting given to them is Napoleon Crossing the Alps by Jack Louis David. Now, the description for this painting is that it shows a strongly idealized view of the real crossing of Napoleon and his army across the Alps through the great St. Bernard Pass in May 1800. Now, what emotions does the painting express to you, group one? Okay. You consider the painting to be very inspiring. It is very inspirational. What else? It expresses bravery. Do you see do you see that also in the painting? Yes, I think and I believe the painting is very inspirational. Now, what do you think is the inspiration of this painting? The inspiration of this painting is Emperor 
Napoleon Bonaparte great. Now, what did you notice about the lines used in the painting? The lines are very visible and are very stressed out. Okay, now, what did you notice about the texture of the painting? Is it smooth or is it rough? It is smooth. And do you see any visible brush strokes in the painting? None. Okay. Very good, group one. Now let's proceed with group two. For group two, their painting is The Portrait of Napoleon on the Imperial Throne. It is by the artist Jean Auguste Dominique Ingers. And it depicts Napoleon in his decadent coronation costume, seated upon his golden encrusted throne, hand resting upon smooth ivory balls. It is indeed very grand. Now, group two, who is your reporter? Heidi Shane. Okay, please come forward. Now, group two, what expressions does the painting give to you? What did it make you feel? It expresses pride. Okay, now what do you think is the inspiration of this painting? The inspiration is Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte. Now, I want you to examine the lines used in the painting. What did you notice in the usage of lines in this painting? They are also very visible. Okay. Now, what did you notice about the texture of the painting? It is smooth. Do you see any visible brush strokes? None. Actually, the painting looks like a picture. Very good, group two. Now, let's proceed with group three. For group three, their sculpture is Psych Awakened by Cupid's Kiss. It is by the artist Antonio Canova, and this sculpture is a mark is made of marble, portraying the relationship of Psyche and Cupid. Now, group three. What emotions does the sculpture express? It expresses love. Okay. Now, what do you think is the inspiration of this sculpture? The inspiration is from Psyche and Cupid. Okay, now, what did you notice about the lines used in the sculpture? It is very fluid. It is very smooth. Yes. Now, what do you think is the texture of the sculpture? It is smooth. Because it is made of marble. Okay, that is correct. Now, let us give ourselves five claps. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, the paintings and sculpture in our activity came from a Western trend. It is called neoclassicism. Neoclassicism refers to the literature, theater, music, and architecture which were inspired by ancient Greece and Asian probes classical art and culture. Today, we will only focus on four elements. Values, subject, line style, and texture. Based from the activity, let us examine the observations from each painting. The first element is the role of art. It refers to the feelings that an art form can give to the observer. Now, based from your observations upon the two paintings and the sculpture, what do you think is the common road of art of the neo from the neoclassic period? What is the role of an art from the neoclassic period? Yes, Angelito. The role of art from the neoclassic period is to express love. What else? Daniela. The role is to give pride. 
What else? Crescia Pay. The role of the art forms from the neoclassic period is to inspire us. Actually, the role of art forms from the neoclassic period is to uplift our mood. Yes, whether it is to inspire, to give pride, or express love. All of your answers are correct. Now, the second element from the neoclassic period is the subject. It refers to the characters that are used in any art form, be it in a painting or in a sculpture. Now, based from your observations, what do you think is the common subject of the art forms from the neoclassic period? Yes, Alre. Heroes? Heroes from where? Who can help Alve? Cheska. The common subjects of the art forms from the neoclassic period are people from history. What history? Be specific. Justin Rain. The common subjects from the neoclassic period are people from Greek and Roman history. Do you understand? Okay, let me clarify that. The subjects used or the common subjects used in the neoclassic period are from people in the Greek and Roman history. Now, the third element is line style. It refers to the, to the technique in using lines in different art forms. You can also see it in paintings and in sculptures. Now, what do you think is the line style used in the art forms from the neoclassic period? Yes, Kathleen. Based from your observations, the lines are very visible and stressed out. What else? Anthony, the lines are very well defined. You can see it from afar, right? Okay, now the fourth element is the texture. Texture refers to the roughness or smoothness of an art form. Now, what do you think is the common texture of the art forms from the neoclassic period? Yes, Argent. The neoclassic art forms have a smooth texture. Well done. Now let us recall what we learned today. The role of art, of the art forms in the neoclassic period is to morally uplift us or inspire us. The subject is all about the people from the Greek and Roman history. The line style is always stressed out and well-defined. And the texture is always smooth. Do you understand? Okay. Now, to, to understand our lesson further, let us have a group activity. I will group you into three again. This will be group one. You will be group two. And this will be group three. I will give each group an art form again. And you have to describe the line and the texture of the art form. You have to write a brief description about what you observed in a piece of paper. Do you understand? Okay, but before we continue, let us recall again our guidelines when we are having an activity in the classroom. What are those three rules? Read the directions carefully. Cooperate with your group mates and respect your group mates. Now, you can now begin the activity. Is everybody finished? Okay, if you are done, you can now go back to your seats. Let us begin with group one. Group one, who is your reporter? Rika May. Okay, for group one, the painting assigned to them was The Death of Marat. It is by Jacques-Louis David. Now, group one, what did you notice about the line style and texture of the painting? The lines are very visible. Is that correct? 
Okay, yes. The arms are very well defined as well. Now, what did you notice about the texture? It is very smooth. Did you see any visible brush strokes? Not. Okay, well done, group one. Let us give group one three claps. One, two, three. Let's proceed with group two. For group two, the painting assigned to them was the Apotheosis of Homer. And it is actually a painting by, G by Jean August Dominique Ingres. Group two. What did you notice about the line style of the painting? It is very visible, correct. Now, what about the texture? It is smooth since small details are also identifiable. Very good. Let us give group two, three claps as well. One, two, three. Let's proceed with group three. For group three, I assigned a sculpture to them. The sculpture is Christ by Bertel Thorvaldsen. Group three, what did you notice about the line style? It is very visible and evident. Correct. Now, what, what, what about the texture? It is also very smooth very good now let us give group three three claps one two three congratulations to all groups you all did well now from the art forms that we saw earlier we found out that there are many great artists from the neoclassic period upon seeing these art forms what did you realize yes Alway. Okay, an art form can allow an observer to see through history. Very good. What else? Uh, Cassandra. Okay, art forms can inspire everybody. Now, what else? Okay, none. Now, art forms are inspiring because art is an expression of an emotion. Many great artists created their masterpieces because they were inspired by something. Through these art pieces, they want their observers to feel the same emotion. As the young generation of today, what do you think we should do to preserve these art forms? What can we do to help in preserving these art forms, especially the art forms from the neoclassic period? Yes, Jasper. Appreciate these art forms. What else? Do not vandalize these art forms. What else? Wonderful. Create new art forms inspired from the art forms from the neoclassic period. Well done. Now, in order for us to further understand our lesson, I will give you again another activity sheet. Read the directions carefully and encircle the letter of the correct answer. Do you understand? Is everybody finished? Okay, if everybody is finished, clap five times. One, two, three, four, five. Now, exchange your activity sheets with your seatmate and let us answer your activity sheet. Read the directions and encircle the letter of the correct answer. Number one, which among these served as an inspiration for the, for the neoclassic period? A, classic Rome. B, medieval era or C, Baroque era? The answer is letter A, classic Rome. Number two, this art form was not affected by neoclassicism. A, music. B, architecture. C, digital drawing. It is letter C, digital drawing, since digital drawing is not yet created during the neoclassic period. Number three, which among these is not a subject of neoclassicism? A, Greek history. B, legends. C, Roman history. The answer is letter B, legends. Number four, what is the role of the art form from neoclassicism? A, drama. B, moral uplifting. C, 
carry viewer away? What do you think is the correct answer? It is letter B, morally uplifting. And number five, what value do neoclassic art forms show? A, intuition. B, order and solemnity. Or letter C, emotion. The correct answer is letter C, emotion. Now, I want you to count the number of correct items and put it or write it at the top of the paper. Who among you got five? Okay. Four. Three, two, one, zero. Okay, well done. Now, for your assignment, you have to draw or paint an artwork in the style of neoclassicism, which promotes saving our country or community in pandemic COVID-19. You have to pick which among those two topics will you consider. Now you have to give a title and a short description about your work. You have to do this in a 1-8 illustration board. Do you understand? Okay, and I want you also to examine this rubric since I will use this in order to give proper scores to your assignment. Copy this assignment in your notebook and let us all stand for a short prayer. Are you ready to pray? Okay, let us pray in the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord, for guiding us for all the things we've done today. Watch us, Lord, on our way and take us home safely. Amen. In the name of the Father, of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Goodbye, children. Hey, guys, and you just watched another episode from the Shudo Demonstration Teaching Series by Cherniel for Arts in Grade 9. At para sa lesson plan and instructional materials ng video na ito, ilalagay ko ang lahat ng link dito sa description box. At para sa lahat ng mga videos ko tungkol sa DepEd Ranking, lesson plan tutorials, and other teacher-related stuff, iiwan ko ang lahat ng link dito sa description box. And once again, this is Cherniel. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye guys!